that means hello. My plan for today was to come in and see if I could do some sort of work on this big boaty car. But then I have come in somewhat late and um, I've come in with a promise to go straight back home again once this chap's turned up for his window regulator. <laughs> the task is quite simple. I'm going to do a little bit of tidying up whilst I'm waiting. This really doesn't belong just there plonked right in the middle, does it? And it won't be for long. This is Project Amy and if you haven't noticed, Amy has an electric sunroof. Well, what I need to do is find out if it works. So, here it goes. There it does, it works. That's excellent. It works, and not only that, it isn't rotten either. It is solid. That is exceedingly good news. But will it tilt as well as slide? Tilts as well. Three hundred brake horsepower Calibra. I'm promised a test drive in this soon. It's a Saab two liter with a red bit on the top. Red means power. means I could potentially work outside whilst it's wet. Outside, inside, wet, still dry. That's the plan. The plan's changed though because I'm about to go on a little trip to Rover Rivel. You know that place. I've been there before. You've seen it a bit. With not Alfie but Boaty's boat. Although, that is rather dependent on whether this car will start. That's a good start. And... No! No problem. There's the old battery out. And then his own battery recharged and fit back in. Keys at the ready, just in case. Ah, no alarm. I was expecting it to go off then. Maybe tomorrow I will come back to you, Derek. Just put ten pounds and six pence worth of diesel into Boaty's boat because he decided to bring it along with no fuel in it. £10.06, yeah. The uh, low fuel light is still on. I paid £10.07 though because I really don't want another penny hanging around in my pocket. It's probably worth what I'm mentioning actually that uh, running one of these on very low amount of fuel isn't very good. It's not good for a fuel pump. In fact, the fuel pumps can fail because of the way the, uh, the tank is like a saddle thing. There's two parts for the fuel pump. So if one side can end up going really low and the fuel pump is just trying to suck up fuel that isn't there and then they fail. So consider that. It's been quite a while since I've driven a 75 and particular a 75 diesel automatic. I like the automatic box in these. I think they're much better than having a manual box on a 75 what it is. Oh, and now here's a point. Is this car any good? There's a point. 
It's almost like doing a review while I'm just taking it over to Craig's to have some welding done on it. I just don't find the 75 to be a particularly exciting car to drive personally. It's it's nice and comfortable, but they're always so clunky. But the sport button is particularly hilarious actually because you put it into sports so SD is on the dashboard there for sport drive but you can leave that on when you're in reverse so you can have sport reverse which is probably a bit unnecessary even more unusual is sport neutral um, so I don't know how you can be sporting in neutral unless somehow the wheels are freed up and go around a bit more easily so you can coast faster but the best one has to be sports park not even sure how to begin to explain that one. The question is, how punchy is this car? Well, here I am at 30. Let's go to 40. And there's 40. So that's quite good. But that's as fast as I'm allowed to drive along this bit of road, which is a bit disappointing. Ah, 60. There's 60. It's alright, it's not a bad old knocker I suppose. It's just never really going to feel that quick compared to other diesels because other car manufacturers manage to make diesels really really rather pokey. But uh, Rover didn't bother. It's the first time actually I can put my foot down in someone else's car and not feel bad about it because I'm the one who's bought the fuel for it. And speaking of putting fuel in your car, I just put a tenner in, which obviously went over a ten to uh, six, ten pound and six. And if you paint with notes, you want an exact amount of ten pound, twenty pound, thirty pound, whatever. Otherwise, you've got to be carrying around a lot of change anywhere you go, which is most irritating. But because of the prices of fuel going up so much, it becomes that much more difficult to get it. That's exactly 10 or 20 pound. You know when you're getting close, you're at 9 pounds 98 and you're going... And every time you do it, instead of going up as one penny at a time, 30p. I'm going to be really blunt here. I'm not really enjoying this car at all. When I had mine, I had a um, automatic diesel estate and I really liked it. This one just feels a bit... have rather mixed feelings about the Rover 75 and the ZT because to my mind it's one of the most handsome cars ever but they do tend to wear out a bit quickly and it's a bit like having a beautiful wife it starts off fantastic because she's a proper party girl as well she looks fantastic and everybody loves her she's very very sociable and but she's heavy on the booze and the bags and the suntan stuff going on holidays doing all the kind of things that makes a lady fun but the trouble is all of that activity makes her age quickly she starts off rather fantastic a few years down the line uh, she's starting to show her age really rather badly indeed and i think that's what the rover 75 has done the suspension on them they just require so many replacement parts and if you don't replace them they don't drive as they should who wants to drive around hearing banging and knocking everywhere you go? And again, this is exactly why I like the Rover 25 so much. She may be a bit short, she might not be as good looking, but she can cook and, um, you know, she's not worn out after 10 years or 20 years. She still looks as good. In fact, she's improving with age. Do you know what? She even compliments you. She talks to you like she's, she likes you. And even in the full party dress and makeup and everything, as the ZR, it's still reliable. It goes to many more parties, but it doesn't break down. Well, I'm on my way back. I'm not in the Rover 75, but in a transit. 
transit tipper, which, as you can see, has that back blotted out so that rear visibility can be disproved. So, how does this transit compare to transit face? Well, I will tell you this, it's a lot more sprightly, but then it's probably not as heavy. Or is it? It could be, because it's got a big tip on the back and a lot of hydraulic stuff on the go, whereas mine doesn't. But it does feel a lot more eager to go. The dip's a lot quieter, it steers better, but the rear visibility, not too good. Then again, there's no difference between that and just having the van version of it. You're never going to be able to see behind you anyway. This Audi is doing 20 miles per hour. That is very unusual. Then again, it is an A1, not an A3. If it was an A3, uh, I wouldn't be commenting on it at all. What's best? This transit tipper or that Roma 75 and Rover here? Which is best? That's the question. I don't even know. This is better than I thought. The Rover's worse than I thought. Make your own mind up if you need to. Sheep! Moo! Well, this is good actually. I'm in sixth gear. It's pulling up this hill really, really rather eagerly. Yeah, that's very good. My Rover 25 might do that. And that's a petrol. What's more is my truck won't do it. Because for one thing, it has a five speed box and not a six. But, you know, you're in fourth gear at best going up there. Empty. So to come back to that question, which is best, the Transit Tipper or the Automatic Rover 75? The answer is my Rover 25. This is much nicer. You didn't even know it was in the competition. Nice one, mate. This town is really certainly full of that kind of thing. People love ignoring red lights. And those are just temporary lights, of course, and they're not really that important. But there's still lights to signal one set of traffic to another when they can go and when they can't go. And um, the, the problem with running red lights is that there's always a good chance that coming the other way, there'll be a green light. And that's where accidents happen. Don't be an amber gambler, I think was the phrase uh, referring to if it's on amber, you know, that's the time to slow down. But it rather depends on the circumstances. To be an amber gambler in this town means to stop because someone's going to run into the back of you. It happens all the time where you just about, you can, yeah, you can just, about, just about get away with that as long as no one's watching and the car behind or the van behind and the one following that will be coming through straight after you anyway. Just down here there's a set of lights where um, you get quite a lot of cars coming through when you're already on green and somebody said on one of the Facebook groups about oh it's lethal that junction because of those lights. Yes they're blaming the lights rather than the actual drivers who are well going through the red lights kind of like saying if you have an accident because you've run a red light it's not your fault it's whoever installed the traffic lights for having any kind of chance of you having to stop because you're not going to do so therefore it shouldn't be red in the first place yeah I suppose that's typical of our culture where nobody's to blame for anything no they are there's always somebody to blame but it's not yourself that's what it is. Put it into sport now to go up this hill. And 
see whether it be responses sharp enough at all.